Welcome back everyone. Today it's module 1.6 measures of spread, five number summary, and box plots. All right, what is the range? Okay, the range is the maximum value in a data set minus the minimum value. And it's the most basic measure of spread or variation in statistics. It can be represented by a distance on the number line. The number line is the standard number line that you're used to seeing like that. And if the minimum value is represented by, let's say, let's say we're talking about weights of newborns. Okay. And for that month, the smallest newborn in pounds, the smallest newborn weighed four and a half pounds. We'll do decimal values, okay, 4.5. And let's say that the largest newborn was 12.2 pounds. So if we're calculating the range of that data, all the rest of the data falls in between the minimum and the maximum value. So the range is literally on the number line represented by the distance between those two numbers. That's the range. So the range will be the maximum value 12.2 minus the minimum value 4.5 which is 7.7 pounds so you'll notice that the unit for the range follows the units for the rest of the data. So this distance here is 7.7 .7 on the number line. That's the range. Okay. But when we're taking a closer look at the data, we really want more information than the, the range. And we're, later on, we're going to talk about what we call the standard deviation. But for now, we're going to look at quartiles. So let's divide our data into four equal groups. We get quartiles. Q1, now this is a sub, a sub excuse me, this is a um, sub notation here, subscript notation, Q1, right? So first quartile. That's the number in the data set. It, m it may or may not be a data value that's greater than or equal to 25% of the data. Q2, that's a number that's greater than or equal to half of the data. We already know what that means. That's the median. Okay? And Q3 separates the lowest 75% of the data from the highest 25. Pictorially, it may look something like this, but it may not be that they're evenly spaced. The bottom 25% lays here below Q1 then the next 25 between the first quartile and the median. Remember, this is the median. Then the next 25, and then finally the highest 25. Remember also that these can be represented by percentiles, P25 here and P75 here. So if you ever took a standardized test and it said that you scored at the 78th percentile, that's somewhere over here. Right, 78th percentile means 78% of the test takers scored less than you. That's what that means. It does not mean, it does not mean that you got a 78% on the exam. Not at all. Not at all. You could have gotten a 50% on the exam, but you still scored better than 78% of the test takers. Going back to the example with the babies, the newborns, Q3 is somewhere around here, or P75. So let's say, just for the sake of argument, that P75 is 10 pounds, 10.0. That means that 75% of the babies, 75% of the babies weigh less than 10 pounds. That's what that means. So P75 means the weight of the baby for which three quarters of the other newborns weighed less than him. So 
skip that. All right, so here is a data set. So for data set one, don't worry about data set two right now, but for data set one, what's the minimum value? That's right, it's 41. What's the maximum value? That's right, it's 66. And same thing for these. Because they're already listed in order from lowest to highest. If they're not listed in that order, you have to relist them. So determining quartiles, there's a process. The simplest way is to use a calculator. So I have my trusty calculator here. Oops. Let me use my mouse to be a little more precise. So let's see if I can get the calculator so we can see it, but also so it's not blocking too much. All right, there, that's a little better. All right. So what I need to do, first of all, is I need to plot this these numbers in the calculator. The way we do that is we click Stat. Edit is the first one. And then you'll see that I've already punched these numbers in. But all you have to do to punch them in is hover over the first one and type in the value, 41. Type in the next value, 44. Remember, these are the data set one. Okay. 45, all the way up through 66. Okay. Then go to the right arrow. and type in the smallest value, 20, minimum, all the way up through the maximum, which is 70. Okay, so once you've got your data sets typed in, the next thing that you can do to find the five number summary is to click on stat, the instructions are here, stat, calculate, one variable stats, feel free to rewind the video at any point, by the way, if I'm going too fast. One variable stats, enter, second, L1. That will use the data set one. It gives me the mean value. It gives me the standard deviation, which we're going to look at later. It gives me the number of values. If I click the down arrow a bunch of times, there's my five number summary right here. So the minimum, Q1, Median 47.5, which is halfway between the two middle values. 53 is Q3, and the maximum is 66, as you may recall. Okay, so Q1 is 45, which is right there. Q3 is 53, and once again, 47 and a half. So this is Q1, Q3, and that's the median Q2. For this data set, you'll see that this is Q1, this is Q3, and 49.5 is the median as, as well there. Do the exact same thing for the second data set. Let it clear. Click Stat. Calculate one variable stats, but this time we're going to go second 2, or second L2. Hit Enter. Go down and there's the information there. So once we determine the five number summaries, then we can plot that on the number line in what we call a box plot. So once again, the information that we just got for both data sets. All right, to get the box plot, we have to plot that five number summary on the number line. So first of all, you have to determine the five number summary. We've done that already. Then we're going to draw the horizontal axis on which the numbers obtained can be located. Above the axis, mark the quartiles and the minimum and maximum with vertical lines. So if you're drawing the number line using the information we just got, there's the number line. Let's, for, let's do data set one first. So we've got 45. We've got the minimum, 41. Now what we'll try to do is try to space it so that you can see the, the spacing 
or the spread of the data. So this is a distance of 4, so I might go 4, 49, 53, 57, 61, 65, and there's my 66. So this helps me get a picture of my spread of my data. So we do a vertical line for the minimum, we do a vertical line for the maximum. There's Q1. So this was um, 49, this was 53, which is Q3, and there's the max, and there's my box plot. Okay, then what you can do is you can draw data set 2 above that or below it so that you can compare them. So I'll show you how we do that on the calculator, make it a little simpler. So on the calculator, all we have to do is use the stat plot function. So if the stat plots are off, which the default is that they're off, we go second y equals, says stat plots. Notice that currently they're off. So I would need to turn them on. The default is the uh, scatter plot. So I would want to go right, 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 right to the fifth one, which is the box plot. Make sure that the list there is correct. Then go back up to the plot names and turn on plot two with lists L2 as a box plot here. Then we need to visualize it in the window. So if I go to the standard window, it's not going to show you what you need it to show. In fact, it doesn't show anything. This is negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10 for Y as well. So what we would have to do is click on, well, there's multiple ways to do it, but if you click on zoom and go down to 9, which is your zoom stat, it knows what lists you've typed in and it will plot those so that you can see them. So there's the two box plots. So the one that I already plotted on the other slide is plotted here on top. The other one's on the bottom. So you can see the bottom one's a little more spread out, at least in terms of the min and max. Right? The next thing we're going to look at is called the interquartile range. Interquartile range is the distance between Q1 and Q3. The distance between Q1 and Q3. So the IQR is a little bit more interesting maybe than the, ra the actual range of the data because it really sort of embodies much of the data. All right, so you may remember from previous that in data set one, Q1 was 45 and Q3 was 53. So to determine the IQR, of course, we would just subtract those two numbers, which is eight. That's the interquartile range. So the interquartile range here the distance between Q1 and Q3. That's the 8 right there. Here it would be from 48 to 61. So the IQR for, for set 2, that's the IQR for set 1, is 13. So that's the 13 distance right there. Alright, so to determine outliers, what we do is we multiply, oh, excuse me, an outlier is a value who may, it may be because of an error or it may be just an atypical value, okay? So an example of an outlier, uh, oops, a zero score on an exam because someone was absent. In other words, they didn't take the exam, but they got a zero because they never made it up. Okay. Other outlier examples, uh, commute times, but we're including commuters who had to stop because they got pulled over, they got a flat tire, or they were in an accident, something like that. Or real estate prices, because uh, including someone's house who's burned to the ground. Newborns who are huge. And LeBron James. So if you took a random sample and you just happen to get LeBron James in your random sample for height, weight, whatever, he would throw off the data. He's an outlier. Or a nursing student with below D uh, GPA. From what I understand, uh, it's a very competitive nursing school and so nursing students tend to have relatively high grades. 
So the rule for outliers is that we take the interquartile range, which you remember before was 8, multiply it by 1 and a half. It's sort of a generalized rule. So that gives us 12. So 12 above or be above Q3 or below Q1. So once again, um, reminding ourselves that Q1 was 48 for the second, this is the second data set, and Q3 was 61. Also, if I did one variable stats for the first data set, you may recall that the Q1 was 45 and Q3 was 53. So that is your interquartile range, right? So if I take 12 and subtract it from Q1, I get 33. If I take Q3 and add 12, I get 65. So values that are below 33 or above 65 are going to be considered outlying values. So here and here. So remember that the maximum was 66. So this is a suspected outlying value. It's not automatically an outlier, but we may want to do some further investigation. Same thing we just said here. All right, um, so here's a good example for you to practice with your TI calculator. 12 college students and we're measuring their pulse. So this is beats per minute, right? 62 beats per minute, maybe it's resting. Maybe it's resting heart rate. Okay, so with these numbers, by the way, this is the indicating where the median is, right? So hopefully you can figure that out. Figure out what the minimum Q1, Q2, Q3, and the maximum are, and then draw a box plot based on that. By the way, if you YouTube or Google create box plot in Excel, you should be able to find YouTube videos also for using Excel. That's what you like to use. Thank you and good night.